I walked into the elevator after a late night study session, and my heart nearly stopped when I saw my ex boyfriend there. We've been broken up for a couple of months now, but clearly I wasn't over it. To make things easier, I put my earphones on and half closed my eyes. I didn't notice anything was wrong until I felt him tap me on the shoulder, and it felt electrifying. I took my earphones out and suddenly realized that the elevator wasn't moving anymore. It was stuck. I think we're stuck. My ex Derek voiced the obvious. Uh, uh, I tried to gather myself and sound calm. Let's call for help then. As fitting as my suggestion sounded, we quickly realized that there was no signal. We were stuck in an elevator on Friday night. Just my luck, huh? I said with a nervous chuckle, hoping for some reaction, but he seemed indifferent. Maybe this is my chance to get him back, I thought. I tried to look more scared than I really was. This is terrible. I don't know what to do, I said, looking at him with teary eyes. Tell me it's going to be all right, I thought. Hug me and make it all better. Try the help button, Derek suggested without showing any signs of sympathy. I sighed and pushed the button as he suggested. Nothing. At this point, I was starting to actually get scared. I could see that he was as well. We tried to yell and bang on the walls, in hopes someone would hear us and call for help. When we didn't hear anything in response, we started brainstorming for a way out. Just like in the months leading up to our breakup, we end up just dumping ideas and not listening to each other at all. He rejects my every suggestion without even hearing me out and raises his voice like that's gonna make what he's saying more valid. This is just like you, I yelled in frustration. It's all about you, isn't it? You're not even listening to me. You never did. What? Derek frowned. What are you talking about? He asked me in a small voice. Is that how you feel? The genuine surprise on his face touched me, and with tears in my eyes, I told him how much our breakup affected me. Derek, now not being able to escape due to the closed space, listened to me this time. I told him about how lonely I felt during the last month of our relationship, and how I felt that he decided to break up all on his own without even giving us a chance. We talked and apologized to each other, the way I think we should have done instead of breaking up all those months ago. Just like I thought, this situation turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Let's try this again, I said, wiping my tears with one hand as I pushed the help button with the other. There were still no human voices, but this time we heard some static. As we listened to that, I heard something that sounded like footsteps outside. For a moment, it sounded like someone was walking and talking outside. We tried to yell to attract their attention. Alas, nothing came out of that. We were still trapped. The sounds of storm raging outside made the situation creepier. I could hear the wind, the sound of glass breaking and something falling. If it's that serious, then the campus might stay closed for days while the damage is being repaired. While listening to that, I heard weird sounds coming from Derek. When I turned to look at him, I saw him on the floor, hugging his knees and hyperventilating. He was whispering something under his breath. I got on my knees beside him. Derek, what's... And then I remembered a podcast I had listened to that described panic attacks and coping techniques for them and realized that he was having one. Damn. Shh, it's going to be okay. You're safe. I held him close and helped him through it. Being this close to him and seeing him in such an intimate moment made my heart ache. It was all I'd wanted for the past months. After a while, he got better. His breath evened out and he wasn't as tense. He was still in my embrace, though, and didn't even try to move away. Just when I was starting to get used to it, he suggested trying to get out somehow. The thought of getting out wasn't so appealing anymore, and I tried to talk him out of it for now. We could get out later, after we got some sleep and had more energy for brainstorming. What? Derek moved away and looked at me. You're... that's not... why would you want to stay here? What? Oh, is it because I'm here? A shadow of suspicion fell on his face. Is that what you had in mind? To get me alone and get me to do what you want? What? You're being ridiculous. I'm stuck here too, remember? Why would I put myself in that position? I defended myself against his ridiculous accusations. Yeah, you're stuck with me. Someone you didn't want to break up with. So if you put two and two together, you get nothing. That's insane. And I'll prove it. I will get us out of here. But first, let's eat and sleep, I suggested with a sigh. I have some snacks on me and I'm so tired. Why would you have food after going to the library? I like eating chocolate while studying. You know that about me. I don't. I feel like I don't know you at all. We ate in silence, sitting with our backs against opposite walls of the elevator. He kept throwing suspicious looks at me. I felt hurt and betrayed. We're stuck in an elevator together probably for a long time with seemingly no help available and he was picking fights with me like I'm his enemy. We fell asleep on the floor. A few hours later, I woke up to the sound of a human voice coming through the speakers. I frowned as I felt some weight on my lap, only to realize it was Derek's head resting there as he slept. 
I couldn't help but smile. The sight of him sleeping so heartwarming. I didn't want to wake him up and get out now. So with a heavy feeling in my soul, I turned the speakers off to silence the voice of a man asking if there was anyone in the elevator, and I fell asleep again, with my hand tangled in Derek's hair. After waking up, we tried to look for a solution again. We didn't come up with anything. At this point, we were both pretty panicked. It's pointless, Derek said. No one's coming. We're doomed. As he said that, he pressed the button again. You've reached the security department, an automated recorded voice announced. Due to the weather conditions and the weekend, no one is in to respond to your request. Please wait until Monday and we will get back to you. We both cursed under our breath. Monday? Two days away! We were stuck in a limited space with no reception, all out of snacks, and I thought of that person reaching out to us while we were asleep, and I stupidly turned the speaker off. For what? To hold Derek's head on my lap? I ruined our chances of getting out. Fear settled in my chest, and I started to yell and bang at the walls again. We've done this before, and rationally, I knew it wouldn't help any better this time, but I couldn't help myself. I felt trapped and guilty, and like, Derek was right to call me selfish when we were breaking up. He joined me and banged at the walls again. All of a sudden, the elevator dropped down slightly, and the lights started flickering. I yelped and sat down on the floor immediately. Stay down! Derek sat down as well, and found my hand with his. It's all right, just stay down. For a few hours, we tried not to make any unnecessary moves. I fell in and out of sleep purely because there was nothing to keep my mind busy. I could still hear the storm outside, sometimes an occasional sound of a siren. Suddenly, a weird smell hit my nose. Wait, what's that? I realized what it was before I finished the sentence and winced. Derek, did you pee on the floor? Yeah, why? He didn't seem bothered at all. We have to stay here for God knows how long and you choose to urinate all over the place? Calm down. It's not like I can just hold it in forever, Kath. Don't you want to pee? We've been stuck here for so long. I didn't drink much on Friday. I don't... Why? Derek's facial expression went from being defensive to suspicious in a matter of seconds. When I didn't reply, he smirked. Just like I thought. It was because you were planning to be stuck, wasn't it? Oh, for God's sake, not this again. Maybe I was wrong. This wouldn't save us. Maybe nothing could. He was about to reply when a loud sound of a phone notification distracted him. Both of us immediately grabbed our phones. He's the one that got a notification, but no more came through, and there's no signal again. However, we thought this meant that there was hope, and tried to find a spot with reception in the elevator. Though we didn't find that, we saw a trap door in the ceiling that we hadn't noticed before. Here, I'll help you up. I got on Derek's shoulder and tried to open the trap door. It took some effort, and then it opened to show the darkness of the elevator shaft. All my confidence went straight out. I felt my body start shaking. You have to go there and... Are you okay, Kath? Kath? Derek spoke to me, and when I didn't reply, he helped me down. Oh, that's right. You're afraid of the dark. I forgot. After seeing me nod, he continued. It's all right. I'll be right here. I won't let anything hurt you. He comforted me, and after a few minutes in his arms, I felt brave enough to try again. This time, I got out onto the roof. One bar. That had to be enough. I tried to dial the police, the emergency service, the hospital, and soon enough realized that though I could hear them, and badly at that, they couldn't hear me. Disappointed and sad, with Derek's help, I got back down. Derek suggested going further up the shaft in case some of the floor doors might open, and he seemed to be understanding. It'd been a long day for the both of us. We needed the energy to continue trying to get out. We both fell asleep. When he suggested going up again after we woke up, I agreed. We got up onto the roof, it was very dark, and every step had to be carefully calculated. I took my time making sure I wouldn't fall, but Derek rushed, thinking we might get out. We were climbing up when he took a wrong step and fell back down. The elevator dropped again. I was choking on my tears and climbed down to him, terrified and wondering if we would even get out of this alive. I can't go up again now. Derek shook his head and took my hand. No, no, we have to, we... I couldn't finish the sentence. I just yelled, letting out my desperation and frustration. Derek flinched but didn't stop me. I kept screaming. It was an inconvenient but effective way of letting out my fear and anxiety. After that, I reminded him of my desire to go up on my own. Now that I've conquered my fear, I was confident I could climb high enough and maybe get us help. Derek shook his head again. No, please don't. He brought me closer, and my heart skipped a beat. I won't be able to rest and recover while you're out here on your own. I'd be worried crazy. He brushed my cheek with his fingertips. Let's go back into the elevator together, please. We were going to kiss for sure, I thought. I could feel his breath on my lips. And then he moved away. 
but that closeness touched me enough for me to give in, first leaving him alone on the roof to relieve himself there. When he came back down, he tried to rest to get over the post-fall dizziness. Suddenly, the speakers went on. Is anyone there? A man asked. And it sounded like a real voice this time, not a recording, replied right away. Derek and I briefly explained our situation. The man sounded hesitant as he asked all these questions, and soon enough my suspicions were confirmed. There's a storm and the whole campus is closed. My heart nearly stopped at that news. Then the man explained that in this situation, though it usually is not advised, we should get out of the elevator shaft and try to get out on one of the floors. The connection cut off while he explained some details. I felt mentally and physically exhausted, but ready to go there just to get us out. We've spent enough time in this metal box, trying to talk me out of it. We've tried, it's too dangerous. But I insisted, it was our only chance. He gave up after a while and agreed to let me go there. Derek himself was not feeling too well after his fall. I could see it hurt him when he stood up. I managed to get way up further than Derek and I did when we went together. I got to one of the set of doors. They, of course, were closed, and I listened carefully for any noises coming from the other side. I thought I heard something, but no one answered when I tried to scream for help. I thought I was going insane, hallucinating. As a last-ditch attempt, I got my phone out. To my surprise, there was some signal, and only 5% battery. I was getting more nervous each second as I dialed the number with my shaking hands and watched the phone drop from my hands and fall. I climbed down as soon as possible, thinking it could be on the elevator roof. My heart dropped when I heard the sound of my phone turning off. Here goes our last chance, I thought to myself. Feeling like a failure, I returned to the elevator. After telling Derek what happened briefly, I fell asleep, haunted by the look of suspicion on his face. I woke up a few hours later. Derek was right next to me, holding my hand. I smiled bitterly and thought about whether or not it was all worth it. Suddenly, he put his hand around me. That was the only answer I needed. Yes, it was. Once again, I thought that this had to be the moment we would kiss. We have to try again, Derek whispered, just an inch away from my lips, and my heart fluttered, and then he reached for the help button. Oh, so that's what he was talking about. Security department talking, we are aware of your situation. A voice suddenly filled the elevator. The light stopped flickering. Help is on its way, you'll be out soon. In the meantime, please stay calm and know that everything is okay. Right after the speakers went off, the elevator started moving. Derek and I got up to our feet, and he looked so confused, but didn't let go of my hand. When we got out, we saw a team of paramedics and some repairmen. Strangers surrounded us, asking questions, giving us food and water. I felt someone trying to drag Derek away and immediately squeezed his hand tighter. No! I yelled. I won't let him go, I won't! Derek frowned, taking a step closer to me. It's all right, they just want to give us checkups. I won't let you go, I repeated and clutched his shirt with my other hand. I'll never let you go. He seemed touched by that, like we were in a romantic movie, and this confession was the grand gesture that gets the couple together. It's all right, Kath. Derek pulled me in closer and put his arm around my shoulder. We'll go together then. If only he knew that he was right all along. This was all my doing. I knew I'd never let him go. I needed a chance to get him back, and Derek wouldn't talk to me, so I had to find a way to force him to. I paid this guy $2,000 to break the elevator when the two of us would be there together. The fact that it turned out to be a stormy Friday night was inconvenient, but I had to go through with my plan. I had to get the love of my life back no matter what, and I succeeded.